Mark Rowley, head of the Metropolitan Police, has spat his dummy out this week attacking armchair commentators who film the police. Posting to LinkedIn, Rowley said that those on the front line don't have the benefit of being able to watch a full incident unfold before deciding what to do. They have to be decisive and act quickly. Which I agree with. Of course, you shouldn't be allowing an incident to go further than necessary before intervention. But the issue we have is that once police have intervened, rather than doing what they're supposed to do and find out what's happened, they will simply continue along the path that the person they have grabbed is the one at fault, while allowing potential real offenders the ability to disappear. I remember when I was younger and police used to turn up to a situation, one couple would talk to one person, the other would talk to the other party and decide from those interactions who is most likely telling the truth. But these days police will go in full force in many cases and then because they know they will be in the sticky brown stuff, they simply continue with the arrest even though they know they are in the wrong. It almost seems that it's better for them to arrest the wrong person and let their supervisor try and cover it up than simply apologise for fucking up. Rowley said that the reality is that policing is complex, challenging and can look messy. We expect officers to arrive on scene quickly and act with limited information based on what they see. And they do so in the glare of hundreds of people ready to film their every movement. There aren't many professions where from the minute you arrive at an incident to the minute you leave you are filmed and then critiqued by an army of armchair commentators. Yet this is what happens to our officers and they still come back to work the next day. I'm proud to call them my colleagues and I am in awe of their resilience to continue, turning up day and night knowing that whenever they get out of a vehicle, more and more cameras are focusing on their actions. But we shouldn't underestimate the toll that this has on them and their families and how off-putting it is to the next generation who may think, why would I put myself through that? So let's just break this down a little bit. Yes, policing can be complex, challenging and look messy which is why we must scrutinise them. Allowing police carte blanche to do whatever the fuck they want without being scrutinised by the public will lead to utter disaster. In fact, some police, even though they know they are being filmed, are so narcissistic or feel so protected or have so much hate and anger towards the general public that they simply don't care about the cameras when that red mist sets in, which is why scrutiny is a must. He says we expect officers to arrive on scene quickly and act with limited information based on what they see. Isn't it funny how the bootlickers moan at me about short video clips that I use in reports saying I don't know what happened before they started recording, blah, blah, blah. But Rowley has said that police literally do exactly what I have to do. Assess the situation based on what we see, not what happened earlier or what might happen afterwards. You know, but what's occurring right at that very moment? And I fully understand that mistakes can be made when you're in a situation like that. I said in a previous video that, I mean, if you're doing your job properly, then what do you have to worry about, right? I, I realise that some situations can be dangerous and will require a level of policing that some people will see as excessive. But we see more and more people who are of no real threat being tasered, pepper sprayed, assaulted in police pylons, injured, and in some cases, killed. If this was a rare occurrence, then the public would be able to understand more, although it should never happen. That's an impossibility. But on the odd occasion, if something went wrong, where Plod panicked or genuinely made a mistake, the public would be more willing to accept that than the vast numbers of people we see being assaulted by police when there is simply no need for it. So I and others do understand that mistakes can be made in these live incidents, but the number of mistakes or even the number of times police know exactly what they are doing is far too high and this requires a level of scrutiny that oversight boards simply do not give. Rowley continued by saying that it is now a regular occurrence for officers to find themselves caught in the middle of public debate, being accused of being both woke and fascist for the exact same actions. Which of course is going to happen. Both parties want to be believed they are the victim and both will have a hissy fit when they are not believed. But this is where police and common purpose training has failed us. If police were hired with some life experience and hadn't been indoctrinated into the woke views many now have, they would be able to look at a situation more objectively. And instead of assist arresting someone because the words they've used upset someone else, they should look at whether the words used were inciting violence or a crime, or whether they fitted into another category of offence that doesn't involve people's hurty fee fees. 
therefore being able to tell both parties that no offence has been committed and sending them both on their merry little way, rather than having to assert their dominance over someone on behalf of a weak-minded member of the public. During his ramblings, he obviously um, felt the need to try and get some sympathy from the public by saying that over the previous 48 hours, 12 officers had been hurt on duty, including one who was hit in the head with a bottle and another, another who was stabbed in the hand. I asked myself why he's not listing all the injuries. Why not say exactly what happened to each police constable? Is it because some of those injuries were pathetic? Maybe there was a stubbed toe getting into a police car, or a hot gherkin slid out of uh, one of their Big Macs onto their lap and burnt them. Bearing in mind Rowley said that they had been injured, not that they had been assaulted, apart from the two he mentioned. Nobody, cop or not, should be hit with a bottle or stabbed, and I'm not taking away the seriousness of those actions. But many police will and do literally claim injury for anything because they will get their paid time off because they are police. Pretty much everybody simply takes their word as gospel when it's been proven time and time again that they simply can't help themselves but lie. Had the Met and other forces done their job properly without being infiltrated by woke ideology and snowflakes with police personnel being dealt with properly and harshly, then we wouldn't be where we are right now. We wouldn't need to scrutinise the police as much as we do, but with so many incidents that could have been resolved in ways that don't require people being injured or in some cases killed, what do you expect us to do? Thank you for sticking around to the end. If you enjoyed the report, please show your support with a thumbs up and share your thoughts in the comments below. If you don't want to add a comment, you could always leave an emoji. YouTube will still take that as engagement and it will help the channel. Don't forget, if you're not already subscribed, then please consider subscribing and stay tuned for the next.